so today we're going to look at IAS 23 the standard on borrowing costs and what we're going to have to understand is what are borrowing costs right so borrowing costs at the the most kind of basic may include things such as interest okay on loans or overdrafts right so that's your interest expense and this might also come from the amortization of premiums or discounts what else uh, you could have amortization of transaction costs in arranged borrowings uh, you could have your finance costs in terms of a financial liability you could have exchange differences okay and you could have hedging costs that all come in underneath borrowing costs right so what is the whole point here so when you have interest what do you do you go debit interest expense in profit or loss and you are going to credit either bank or your interest accrual right that goes into the statement of financial position let's say for instance that we had interest of 100 but now what happens is that we will have a portion of this interest that relates to borrowings that relate to a qualifying asset usually the production of you know inventory that takes a substantial period or even something like a um, a building or a warehouse right so a portion of that interest will need to be capitalized to the cost of that asset We'll get into that in a bit more detail, but the basic principle is that you will then go debit PPE, for instance, in the statement of financial position, and you will reduce this interest expense by a portion. Let's say you did that by 20. Okay, so what will happen is the total interest expense in profit or loss will be the 100 minus the 20 which leaves us with the 80 and the 20 that was capitalized will be added to property plants and equipment okay so that's the basics of it then if we had to look at the standard as a standard on a page so we have IAS 23 all about borrowing costs that need to be capitalized the normal treatment is debit finance costs in profit or loss and you will credit your bank or interest accrual in the statement of financial position right that's how we've always dealt with interest and finance costs but what happens if you don't expense it but rather you capitalize Okay, you can only capitalize in certain scenarios here and the most important thing is that this must only be capitalized if you are dealing with a qualifying asset okay now qualifying asset means that you will debit the asset in the statement of financial position and you will credit the finance costs you'll reduce the finance costs out of profit or loss okay and the trick here is that there must be three conditions in order to capitalize and those three conditions when you can start capitalizing is first of all you must actually be incurring expenditure So you've started the building or you started the production process. You must actually be incurring a real borrowing cost, right? You can't be putting in a hypothetical or opportunity cost interest. There must be real interest involved. And then you must be busy with activities to get the asset ready for use or sale. okay so we must be actually building the assets or doing something along those lines 
When will you stop capitalizing? So that is the starting point. When will you stop? You will stop capitalizing when all activities necessary Excuse me while I write this out. All activities necessary to prepare the asset are substantially complete. Not 100% complete, but substantially complete. Okay, so that's when you start and when you stop capitalizing. Before then, all interest is expensed when all activities necessary to prepare the asset are substantially complete, you stop and any ex interest expense thereafter will be what? Well, they will be expense thereafter. Now, when you are doing the calculations for how much borrowing costs need to be capitalized, you're either going to deal with specific borrowings or general borrowings. Okay, so if you're dealing with specific borrowing costs, what's going to happen is you will take, for instance, you go and you borrow a million um, dollars, rands, whatever your currency is, and you take that money and you get that money from the bank, right? But it has a specific purpose. You're going to use it for your building or for the production of this machine. And you will then incur finance costs on all of the debt. But guess what? You might not spend all that money that you get into the bank because you're going to draw down and incurring expenses over a period of time. So now the money that's left in your bank account is going to earn interest or investment income. Okay, so the investment income that you take, you will just take off for calculation purposes. You won't actually pass a journal. And then you will get the borrowing costs that can be capitalized. Okay. And you'll do that for specific borrowings and you'll do specific borrowings first. Sometimes, however, you will apply pool accounting, okay, or pooling of funds, and your general borrowings, they will come from an overdraft or, you know, um, maybe a shareholder's loan, etc. And here you will apply a capitalization rate to the costs incurred. So you look at costs incurred times this capitalization rate, which will be based on the weighted average cost of debt. And that will give you a figure, right? Now, this take note must be limited to the actual borrowing costs incurred. Okay, that's very important. So we've got our little bit of a standard on a page. Nice and easy, nothing to write home about. Now, what we also need to look at is that borrowing costs, okay, must relate to a qualifying asset and the borrowing costs must be directly attributable Okay, to either the acquisition, the construction, or the production of a qualifying asset. What is a qualifying asset, right? So a qualifying asset is going to be an asset that takes a substantial period of time to complete. Now that is a matter of judgment. The standard does not define how long a substantial period is, okay? That's going to take judgment. Right, so what may be qualifying assets? Well, inventories, manufacturing plants, power generation facilities, intangible assets, investment properties, bearer plants. 
but you'll find what are not qualifying assets. Qualifying assets will never be financial assets, inventories produced over a short period of time, or assets that are ready for intended use or sale when you acquire them, right? Okay, but what is quite important is borrowing costs can only be capitalized that are directly attributable to acquisition, construction, or production, right? And directly means that the borrowing costs could be avoided if the expenditure on the qualifying asset had not been made. Okay. Right, so obviously what happens after you've done this whole process, so you have the carrying amount, which is the costs plus the capitalized borrowing costs. Those give you a carrying amount. Now what happens after you've capitalized the borrowing costs if the carrying amount is bigger than the recoverable amount? Then you would have to consider the asset for impairment. So you have an impairment event. Okay, but you do not stop the capitalization of this period. Right, the last thing I just want to quickly discuss is what happens if there is a suspension of activities, right? So if, for instance, you know, you have, you're building a bridge and there's high tide and low tide and one, one or two weeks out of the year, the high tide has to stop your buildings, right? That is what we call a temporary delay. Okay. And it's part, if it's part of the normal part of getting the asset ready for the use, then you do not suspend. Okay, you don't stop borrowing costs. But if there is an extended period where the development construction or production is interrupted and this is not part of the normal process of constructing that asset then you will suspend borrowing costs so that you don't overstate the capitalization okay and then for that period you will just expense your borrowing cost capitalization. Right, so we've made some good progress. Borrowing costs are not overly difficult. Disclosure. Disclosure is going to be pretty straightforward here, ladies and gentlemen. So in the statement of profit or loss, okay, you're going to have your profit before tax note. And in your profit before tax note, you will have your finance costs, which will be made up of the total incurred, which in our little question earlier was 100. You will then subtract the amount that was capitalized in terms of IAS 23. And you'll land up with the total expense that goes through profit and loss. In the statement of financial position, let's have a look at the PPE note. Or you could have inventory notes, etc. PPE is the most common. So you'll have your opening balance carrying amount of whatever it may be. Then you'll have additions, right? And you'll have that made up of direct costs as well as borrowing costs capitalized. Okay, so your direct costs and our borrowing costs capitalized. We said it was 20. You add them up and you get the figure on top. Okay, just remember that your depreciation will then be based on this total times by a rate. Okay, and you'll get your depreciation. So the borrowing costs capitalized as part of the additions and therefore will increase your depreciation expense. 
Great, so that's IS23 done and dusted. Let's do one or two examples quickly to get a feel for it. Thank you.